There's no silks that are super similar to one another. So there's um, no silks that are super similar to one another in here? No, look... there are actually. Okay. <laughs> because Wait, Florida other... doesn't have that rule. Okay. So we've got like these silks here are um, Rapoli. He's a pretty big owner and um, our really one of the top trainers in the country, Todd Pletcher, um, trains for him. And then there's another guy, which they might be outside, but it's basically very similar to these silks, except this orange circle is filled in. Okay. So instead of the R, it's just an orange circle. Mm -hmm. So they're very similar um, because Florida doesn't have that rule where they have to be registered. Um, you know, we've got famous people that have silks. Oops. Bobby Flay, Chef Bobby Flay, he owns oh, horses. Yeah. So Todd Pletcher trains for him. Um, these right here are pretty neat. Um, these are the silks of the Sheik from um, Dubai. So he um, has his silks made and they're actually pure silk. Um, he's got one pair that this, wow. these frogs are actually real gold, but this here, they're gold threading. Mm -hmm. And then his cap is velvet. So he, <laughs> takes very good care of his silks when he's got the silks that are real gold you know he's dropping them off someone for him is dropping them off collecting right. them again um, and the silks can range in price at from anywhere from like hundred and twenty five dollars to twelve hundred and these would be the ones that cost twelve hundred when they retire do they retire silks and like you could bid on them and um, buy them? owners like when they stop owning horses or get out of the business yeah I mean yeah. they stop using their silks. Um, you'll see them hanging sometimes if they had a really great horse, like Secretariat. Sure. Right. You know, those owners will have their silks. I'm sure they're hanging in a museum somewhere. Um, there are some silks, like there's a pair in here that's kind of reminiscent to Secretariat. Mm. Not necessarily the same silks, but similar. Are those the names of the jockeys, like G. Arnold, Rusty? No, so Greg those Fox? are the trainers. And okay. Pedro has the room organized in a specific way that is easy for him to find what he needs when he mm -hmm. needs to find it. So like right here is Todd Pletcher. So these are all the owners that Todd Pletcher trains for. Mr. Kenny, good morning. That would be um, Rusty Arnold. So those are his, the silks for his owners. So it's broken down into trainer and then within each training trainer, um, he's got it alphabetized, color coordinated, and however else he can remember it. That's why he doesn't really let people in here. <laughs> Because if you start grabbing things and he doesn't know where you put it back, he's going to lose the system. <laughs> um, these are the silks of our owner, Frank Stronick. So he owns Gulfstream Park as well as like five other tracks around the country, but also owns horses, breeds horses, and has um, a farm in uh, Canada because he's Canadian and in Ocala and Kentucky. So uh, his farm name is Adina Springs. So these are the silks that are worn when his horses run. We hang them right here in front. Cool. As a, you know, a nod to our owner. Of course not. Um, yeah, so I mean, you, you will find every design imaginable. There's a guy right here. His last name is Rainbow. So what does he put on his silks? A rainbow. There's mm -hmm. a guy um, who owns horses and he's got a big pretzel on his silks. We don't really know why. His name is not Pretzel, <laughs> but he's got like what looks like a big soft pretzel on his silks. Um, one guy will have the initials of his grandchildren. One guy is super Irish, so he's got the clada. You know, so all different things. The really, the clada. What's it's like the heart with the hands. hands. Okay. I don't know where it is, but if you saw it, you would recognize it. Um, but so anything, anything that you could ever imagine is probably in here. There's actually some silks in here. Oh, I see them actually. Okay. So this is a really old stable and Pedro always likes to pull these out. The um, stable name is called Breaking Wind. And so this is what they have on their silks. It's oh great. Goodness. Now, why you would ever want to do this, I don't know, but it's funny. Maybe they have a great sense of humor. Maybe they're goofy. I, I really don't know, but it's pretty entertaining when he pulls those out. Yeah, yeah I guess it's called breaking wind. It's what else are you going to do? Well, yeah, I mean, you kind of got to do something like that. So Marty Wolfson um, is a is an owner or a trainer? Marty Wolfson is a trainer. Okay. Yeah. And so do they work with jockeys to make them better and just like keep them? So jockeys are basically freelance. You know, they work for themselves. They employ an agent that will work on their behalf to try and get the mounts. So jockeys go out to the track every morning to either work horses, you know, network with trainers, 
make themselves known and seen. Um, and then when it comes time to put a race card together, which is normally three days before, like so today's race card was put together three days ago. Mm -hmm. The agents are gonna be there on the jockey's behalf, you know, making sure that they get the mounts that, oh, this trainer said, you know, I'd be on this horse. So confirming that that jockey is getting the mounts that they work to get. Um, I mean, if a jockey makes a trainer mad, you know, doesn't follow his instructions, there's a pretty good chance that jockey will lose the mount next time that horse runs. Mm -hmm. So while you work for yourself, Right. In that moment, for that minute and a half, you're working for the trainer. So you don't want to do anything that's going to, you know, make them mad. So it's all about networking. And is it contract-based for, like, the way that the jockey gets paid out? Or is it like so a flat So the fee? jockey gets paid. <clears throat> every jock that rides in a race gets what we call a mount fee. Right now it's about $100. Um, but for each race, there's a purse. And so that's, like, the, the pot of money that the top finishers get when they win the race. Mm -hmm. So let's say the purse is $20,000. That's gonna be split, it depends on upon the track, but like here I think they pay out to the top four finishers. So the first place horse is gonna get 60% of the, the purse. Mm -hmm. From that 60% that it goes to the owner, the owner's paying the trainer and the jockey. Okay. The jockey is then paying his valet, his agent, and then, you know, keeping whatever's less. So right. left. So they get a mount fee and then if they hit the board or come in the top four they get a portion of the purse. Okay. Is it always eight horses that run? No, it can be I mean we could have on a bad day we'll have five horses in a race. On a great day we'll have twelve. Okay. Um it just depends on how many fit this is Messiah. Hey guys. She's the best. Uh, I try to be <laughs> hey, Mike. Mike Mike Hi, Amanda. Amanda. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. I'm one of the valets I it's like being a caddy for a golfer. You yeah. make sure they got all the equipment. Tell them which way the wind is blowing, <laughs> how it's blowing, you know, okay. stuff like that. We shine their shoes, their sneakers, iron their clothes. Make them look good? Yeah, make sure they have the right colors because you can see there's only a billion colors here. Yeah. So we just only make sure a billion. They, yeah, make sure they attack the saddles at the right weight. So they eliminate all the little things that they have. All they have to concentrate on is just riding the horses. Okay. That's our job. Nice to meet you guys. Nice you too, Messiah. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. So there's actually 5,000 silks, about 5,000 silks in here. Wow. So just under a billion. Um, but still, it's a lot. And right now we're in our, our winter meet, our championship meet. Mm -hmm. So that goes until the end of this month, mm -hmm. uh, April 1st, technically. Um, and right now we have all the best trainers, jockeys, horses in the country. Because honestly, we're also going to want to run, mm -hmm. you know, when it's winter everywhere right. else. Right. Um, so all the people that are here now, or a majority of the people that are here now, will go up north. So they go to mm. Kentucky in April, then they go up to New York. Um, you know, we start the whole Triple Crown races. So this May. isn't a Triple Crown, Triple Crown track, right? No, but we run the Florida Derby, okay. which is normally like a feeder race into the Kentucky Derby. So it's pretty cool. The winner of the Kentucky Derby the last three years has gone on to win the Kentucky. I'm sorry, the winner of the Florida Derby the last three years has gone on to win the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're always really proud of that because, yeah. you know, it's like our our hometown horse. Nice. Um, so a lot of these silks will leave because the trainers will, once they're packing up all their stuff, getting their horses loaded on the van, mm -hmm. they're going to come by and grab all the silks that they need and take them up to the next track. Mm -hmm. um, owners will have multiple pairs of silks if they have horses running at different tracks around the country. Um, we've got an owner... How do you even keep track of everything? 5,000. Like, Pedro, yeah. Pedro's the guy in the hat, the mm -hmm. master of scales, you called him? Cl clerk of scales, but Pedro's the assistant clerk of scales. He's the one in the um, in the green plaid okay. shirt. Um, but he just, he's been doing it so long. You know, he's in here all day, every day. You know, you kind of just, it's like a game of memory. You know, I remember that where that one is, or I remember in the general vicinity where it is. Mm -hmm. um, but there's times when, you know, a trainer will say, oh, you have... You have my silks. No, you picked them up. No, you know, so there's always, you know, instances like that. But it's pretty rare, to be honest. They do a really good job in here. Um, wow. But yeah, so Pedro, what he'll do is he gets a copy of the program before it's printed or anything. So he can go through and check each race and see what horse is running in each race and who the owners are and make sure that he has those silks. So he'll just go one by one. Yes, I've got them. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. 
And for the silks that he doesn't have, he's either on the phone with the trainer, the owner, assistant trainer, someone saying, I don't have your silks. You need to send them, you need to drop them off something. Mm -hmm. So that's what he does a few days out then like the day before so yesterday as we were running races